white text over video of past events. Logo, Chicago Cultural Accessibility Consortium. Professional Development Series presents Accessible Services Showcase, Project Potential Part 6, Production and Artistic Direction. On stage, an ASL interpreter signs while a man introduces three people. For our last group to come up, one of the big ideas that we've been trying to get to today is that everybody who you've heard from already is able to collaborate with the artistic team of the production from the very beginning of the planning and, and the design process. So I'm gonna introduce a few members of the artistic team of the play that we saw at the top of today's program. Uh, I'll invite Laura back with us, Eddie Madrano, the, the production manager, and also Casey Peake, our stage manager. Uh, hi there, thanks. Uh, so, uh, as the director, my job is to make sure that all of the elements are, put, are being put together creatively to communicate the story to the audience. And since our audience is so varied and it contains multitudes, I wanted to find a way that that would translate into our process. Um, I've got big dreams for what that means, but in, a, in terms of a first level, for me, it meant treating the, the access providers as designers. So just how I know uh, how, how designers, like the vocabulary of what designers use in the room for, for tech, inviting them to first rehearsal, making sure that they have scripts early, video archival, these things just became kind of inherent to the process because they already are. So why not just include more collaborators in that process? So that's something that we really took to heart as we were putting together uh, this team and thinking about like how are we treating our access providers as designers in this process, um, both uh, logistically and creatively. Uh, so yeah, I'll go ahead and pass it off to the team. Hi. Uh, so as the production manager, um, the biggest takeaway was working with our service providers, you know, as designers, and working with our venue production team to ensure a seamless experience for you, the audience. And what that really comes down to is two major points of focus. The first being that you don't have to be an access expert for accessibility to work. We had the benefit of looking at this production through the lens of accessibility from the outset. However, my role, my approach was no different than that of any other production, whether it be at a Harris Theater, UIC Forum, The Vic, or you know, something as small as The Den. It really is just taking bits and pieces of information, synthesizing, and communicating to the appropriate parties. In this case, taking the needs of our service providers, communicating that to the Theater on the Lake production team and providing the proper resources to ultimately deliver what we hope is a seamless experience. And that brings me to the second point of focus, which is ensuring again that this is a good experience for you. There are probably some things on stage today that you're not quite as accustomed to seeing highlighted. And that was important to factor into our production. And that really is walking a fine line between artistic vision and a sound logistical approach. So again, we were able to, from the outset, think about accessibility from the start to maintain this balance. But even then, it still presented some challenges, such as rehearsing offsite, which created dialogue around our ASL interpreter placement and needing to hang these TVs without an audience present or risers or chairs in place. Really that just made us think a little bit harder about appropriate heights and appropriate distances so as to not obstruct any good sight lines. Um, so in a nutshell, it really is just kind of taking those two thoughts, those two schools of thoughts and working with your team, tying everything together to hopefully produce a successful event. So with that, I will pass it to Casey Peak. Hello, I'm Casey. Um, so the job for the stage manager does not really change with access because in theory, if you are stage managing a production, you are treating everybody that's involved in the production with respect and making sure that their needs are met. Um, so you're just doing that for more people rather than fewer. Um, some small changes that you might need to make are making sure you're including all of the service providers on anything that you send to the entire production team, because again, you're treating them as designers. So you're including them on calls, you're including them on reports, 
and you're inviting them to attend the rehearsals as any other designer would be invited to attend if they chose to come. Uh, that also means that you're adding an accessibility section on your report. You're making sure that just like for if there's a note about the lights or a prop, that there, if there's a note about access, that you're making sure that that is communicated early and so that they can continue to be a part of that process. Um, the other thing you're doing is you're creating and sharing documents of a shared language. So um, as we know, as many of us are doing a lot of things with access, there are a lot of documents about how to speak about disability, how to communicate with people with different disabilities. However, there's not really a document that is how to make sure your access providers feel welcome in the theater environment, particularly because we use language in such a different way um, and because just the way that everything is done is so different. So um, you want to make sure that you're talking about that disability etiquette with your cast and designers and folks who maybe don't know, but that you also want to make sure that you're including information to your access provider, some sort of guide um, of tech terms that they may be unfamiliar with or processes that may be new to them, um, which is actually something that Evan and I are in the process of working on. So if you have more inf interest in that, definitely come and chat with me later. Phase one is, as a director, I consider, okay, so once we get in the space, we're actually going to have to move over the entire set in order to incorporate our um, ASL interpreters. That way we can have like the best point of view, vantage point here. Okay, the captioning is not going to be on the stage here because we have three banks of audience, so what does that mean for where captioning is going to live um, and not be in our in the purview of, of the actors, but still it be in the, in the eye line of it. Um, how are my actors educated on what's about to occur and like not get distracted by the fact that there's words up there, right? Um, there's all of these uh, these things that you consider as, as a director that you don't want to compromise the vision, but you do want to make sure it's all being communicated. So example, um, Chuck and I um, had a moment where the school bell at the very end came in really, really hot on the L ALDs. Um, and once that was uh, noted, then um, there was an instinct to just like bring down the school belt. And I was like, no, 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 wait, let's see what it means if we, if we find a happy middle. So the ticking clock was feeling a little murder, she wrote. Um, anyways, and so instead we decided to sneak that cue in a little bit more um, as kind of a fade in, ask the actor to bring up their voice so that final line was a little bit louder, and now we're prepared for a louder bell, right? These are just little things that kind of make, uh, that made a huge difference. But here's phase two. This is an opportunity. This is not an inconvenience. Access is not an inconvenience, it's an opportunity for innovation. So now as creatives, as directors, as designers, as producers, what can we do to incorporate that into the work that we're doing? Evan and I are so jazzed about this and I'm so jazzed about this that like how do we put captioning on the bookcases of, of the, that the person is standing next to, the actor is standing next to, and it moves along the screen with the actor? How can we, um, let's see here, uh, build in soundscapes that can inform the action of the play for people who are blind or low vision? Um, how can we shadow, um, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, use uh, sign language um, and, and shadow with our actors? And do, does that mean more, um, more rehearsal time? Because yes, it does. How can this become an opportunity for us to be more creative than we have been in the past and thrive in that? This is my call to action for every, di every director, every uh, creative, uh, every artistic director, every designer, to make this more of a priority as you move forward, to make this something that you think that you can, can, can succeed on and be at the forefront of. What an uh, amazing idea, right? Who doesn't want to be at the forefront of something? So with that, I think it's time for our Q&A, but thank you so much for taking the time with us. Fade to Black, white text on black background, chicagoculturalaccess.org. More information and free workshops, calendar of accessible cultural events in Chicago, free accessibility equipment loans, including audio description kits and caption screens. Credits for part six, production and artistic direction. Laura Alcala Baker, director. Eddie Medrano, production manager. Casey Peake, Stage Manager. Jason Harrington, Facilitator. Leandra Williams, ASL Interpreter. Thank you to our sponsors. ACS Interpreting and Training Services. Foxhole Creative. Harris Theater for Music and Dance. Horizons for the Blind. The Michael and Mona Heath Fund. 
Steppenwolf Theatre Company. Video production by Foxhole Creative. Tim Frank, producer. Tony Shivani, camera operator. Alex Moore, camera operator and editor. Haley Blumquist, audio technician. Video audio description by BridgetMelton.com. Video fades to black.